Hello and welcome to another video by me, Alex. Today we will be talking about Selenium WebDriver 4 and it is quite good actually. Well I hope you're all ready because Selenium 4 will be officially released soon. Why do you need to know this? Well there are some functionality changes that could really help you out such as the Chrome DevTools API. There are major changes to the Selenium grid. Many depreciated methods will be removed. Your code will be more stable once Selenium 4 is released. Keeping up to date with the latest Selenium news and automation news will give you something to show your boss next time he wants an update. And you know how it is as a developer. You really don't want to be left behind. So in this video, I'll go through the main changes via the change logs and what they mean. I'll explain how each of these changes can be implemented and achieved, including briefly the new Selenium Grid 4. I'll explain the changes, but instead of implementing the changes here, I'll have a separate video for that later, if that is necessary. So, I have the change docs from the Selenium GitHub repo here. I will go down the list and show you, then, in Java code, the changes. Then at the end, I'll talk briefly about the W3C standardization that is also in Web 504, which is quite nice. At the time of making this video, we have two alpha versions of 4.0. I'll go through these to and explain where we are currently at. First on the change docs list is Chromium based edge support. Okay, so the new driver has been added. Yep. And so if you want to run tests on Chrome, you have to set the system property web driver, Chrome driver pointing at a downloaded um, Chrome driver.exe. So you have, to, you have to go to the Chrome Driver website, download this Chrome Driver, put it onto your machine, and then set the system property. Now you can use the Edge Driver with the same Chrome Driver system property. Um, in the past, we could run our tests on Edge using the Microsoft Edge Driver, but now we have Chrome, Chromium based Edge support, which is very nice. Next. Okay, Selenium web driver using CDP Chrome DevTools protocol. So you, you can access the Chrome DevTools through Selenium web driver now. Uh, I, let me just show you how that is done using the Chrome browser. If you want to use your homepage, for example, right click, go to inspect, and now we have access to the Chrome DevTools. So in the Selenium web driver, you can access each of these elements. You can access the elements, you can access the console, the sources, the network, the cookies, the security, and you can take this data and basically save onto your system. So back to the presentation, you can see here how it's done. So you start an instance of Des DevTools using the Chrome driver, then you create a session and then you add a listener for the specific dev tool uh, application you want to record and then you can send that entry direct to, directly to your system out, uh, your, your console, or you can add a, a listener and send it directly to um, Selenium log entry or even just to a log file. And this is done before you visit the page that you wish to get this information from. Next, enable full page screenshots. So this is really useful. So as it suggests, you can get a full page screenshot. Whether or not your window size could, um, covers the entire page of, of the website you're on, you can run this method and it will screenshot the entire page, which is really useful for debugging and say at the end of a test you want to have some hu human set of eyes, some human verification of something, so you get the screenshots of these pages, save them, then the person can go through these screenshots quite quickly and easily. Element screenshotting. So as you, as you see here, it's part of the element class, so you have an element, web element, that I've named stuff, 
and it's just simply a method under that so you click dot and you can get a screenshot as and this can also be really useful for debugging so if you are having issues with your tests finding elements um, if you have like an after failure type method this can find that element or it can at least screenshot where it thinks that element is so part of the alpha 2 change docs yeah we have two left best support for java 9 modules based on my research i've noticed that there were quite a few bugs for java 9 plus modules a lot of these have been fixed so there's a general performance update same as the next one start reworking http abstractions and this should better support streaming so this is a, also a general performance update that you probably will notice actually next moving on to change docs for the alpha one so many of these may be covered already by what i've gone through with the alpha two but okay first on the list many depreciated methods and classes have been deleted yes you can find the entire list here which is really useful but yeah you're gonna have to look at that list and make sure you're not using any of these before you change your course you do not want to be ruining your test packs next on the list so there's a new alpha version of the grid server so grid 4 is like a new thing now the way the, the way we're going to implement our grids has changed so there's kind of two two parts to this the first part is um is the simplest way to run the grid which is running a remote server so you, you have this j server jar which works similarly to the old grid and you put that onto your machine and in the directory you have this jar you can run all these commands so the easiest mode to run the server is in is standalone so you just put this jar here for standalone and this will create a yeah as it says a standalone server so you can point your java code so your remote web driver will have to just point towards the uh, server which is listening on http localhost 4444 you put your remote web drivers to that run your test and it will run on that machine simple as that so the standalone is kind of like a hub but without the need for nodes so the second part of the grid this new grid is the distributed version which is fairly powerful and and as far as i'm concerned it seems to be running based on the old kind of implementation of the grid with the hub and the node concepts so you start a session map and then you start a distributor and then you front this system with a router which is the bit that you would usually expose to the web so the router will be listening to a new session requests on the same N, uh, domain which is localhost 4444 and then it will s listen to these uh, session requests and then it will send these session requests to the various nodes let me show you the documentation here on the Selenium GitHub. It's, it's actually quite good. So here we are. Fully distributed version is like this. So yeah, so my understanding is you front the system with a router you send requests to this router the router then takes these requests sends to the distributor the distributor then sends out the, the different configurations of your tests to the various nodes and depending on which node is suitable it will run them next basic support for using docker containers with new grid server yes so this is useful for the distributed implementation and basically you can you can start servers um, 
Docker servers, depending on the configuration that's required to run that test on the node. So you can of course create nodes on the Docker machines and Docker can also create machines as they're needed. So you have it to delegate, you have Docker to delegate all of this stuff for you. What's next? Basic support for open tracing has landed. Yep, so what is open tracing? If you're not familiar with this, this is a really nice screenshot I've taken from this blog on the elastic.co. And so tracing is, uh, it kind of tells a story of a transaction or workflow as it propagates through your system. So you can, so your test can keep track of all the different kind of requests and transactions and events of your, of the sites you're visiting and even the user actions. And these can be sent to an open tracing implementation. So tracing is the IT and DevOps teams use distributed tracing to monitor applications. It's particularly well suited for debugging and mon monitoring. Next, yep, this is a little simple one. Location of Safari web driver now configurable using this system property. So as you see in the screenshot, works very similarly to the Chrome driver that I showed earlier. Yep, this is fairly useful. The server, Selenium server, Selenium web driver no longer contains HTML unit by default. So the implications may lie in your, maybe your base test, or your base page class. If you have have your own implementation of an instantiation of the page object, you may be using this kind of dependency. Now all you have to do, you can still use that, but you would have to go to Maven, if you're using Maven for example, and take this dependency and manually add it yourself. Not too bad. Now this is the last one I'm going to go through on the list. Using the equals and the hash code in select element, yes. So these are uh, new, new methods that have been added into the select element. So these were all possible in the other elements. So in the web, in the, uh, web element and the, um, the link element, for example, you had these. Now you can have an equals method and a hash grader method. So it's a little, little bit of more useful functionality. Lastly, is the W3C news. So W3C standardization is standardization which aims at making all of the API requests consistent. So as you may know, the, um, the web driver, the web driver commands send API requests to the website, to the back end of the, or to the website in order to simulate these user actions. But Selenium has been going through the process the last few years to standardize all of these, all of these um, methods, just, just to increase the consistency and the stability of, of everything they're doing. So this is really nice. And so they've more or less achieved W3C standardization and there's an entire list of all of the commands which now abide by this standardization. I'll add the link to this, to this W3C web driver status, to the description of the video. And yeah, you can see more of the list here. So you can go through each of these items on the list and see the exact API request that's, that's being taken. Alright, thanks guys, that's the list. So as you may see, I have not gone through everything on this list. The reason is some of these features are not completely finished yet. So the official release for Selenium 4 
is looking like it will be early next year still or at least the earliest December this year so I'm not going to go into things that, that I'm fairly sure will change but as I said I'll add all of those useful links to the description of the video uh, thank you very much for watching if you like this video could you like the video and you can comment and subscribe to my channel thank you very much laters